Hi. Um, so, one of the reasons I share um, trip reports um, of different psychedelics on my channel is because um, there are definitely sites out there where you can go and, you know, read trip reports and get to know about different psychedelics. And there are also different YouTube channels where you can go and see different trip reports and kind of what, ooh, thunder god, I wonder what that was for. Anyway, there are different YouTube channels where you can go and do the same thing. Um, but first of all, there's not too many examples of uh, a psychedelic trip report you can have. The more you can educate yourself about it before you do it, usually the better. I mean, you don't want to like overanalyze and overpredict what your trip is going to be like. But you do want to be safe. You do want to know what you're getting into. Um, and then on top of that, I'm crazy. Um, and so what we don't have a lot of is people who are autistic, um, have bipolar disorder, have uh, multiple anxiety disorders. Um, within that bipolar disorder, my depression is extremely bad. Um, I also have DID. Um, well, technically more like OSCD 1B, but whatever, go watch that video. This is a different video. Um, the point being is that I have a crazy brain and there's definitely a little bit of stigma around doing psychedelics when you're crazy. And there's a lot to be said for that. Specifically, I won't get into it a lot, but if you don't have a good grasp on your mind, I would stay away from LSD. That is just my personal experience and advice, but I think it's good advice. Anyways, um, yeah, so first of all, there aren't a ton of video trip experiences out there. And number two, there are almost none from crazy folks, especially people with autism. So that's why I do it. Um, Plus, I just love psychedelics, and I think they're really awesome, and I want to share things about them. Um, so it's also selfish. Okay, so this was at the beginning of 2020. I took about three and a half grams of mushrooms, and I'm more or less just going to read through the trip report that I wrote down um, either the morning after or probably that night. Um, might add some comments along the way, who knows? Here we go. This was a weird trip. In some ways, nothing happened, and in some ways, a lot of things happened. My inclination is still to record all these things so I can remember them, but also that goal seems less important. Anyways, I took the shrooms and a smoothie. I was the least nervous I've been to take a psychedelic in a long time. I get really anxious to take psychedelics. I don't know why I still do it. Yes, I do. But I get really anxious. Um, hold on, I'm gonna bit. Okay, so where was I? Yeah, it was the least nervous I've been to take a psychedelic in a long time. Um, I forgot I like doing it alone, but I really like doing it alone. And I know I need to get to work. I don't know what that work is, but I also do, and I feel ready. So I took the shrooms and the smoothie with bananas and strawberries and peanut butter and milk and raspberries is what I did. Then I ate it. Sometimes I talk like a whatever. Um, the first 20 minutes or so were normal enough. Just got my bath ready, made sure I had water and everything like that. Felt like getting ready to go to the beach. Um, it, I do actually remember that. I did feel a lot like getting ready to go to the beach. Um, I went and sat outside for a little bit. I was nervous, but much less nervous than normal. Again, I get really fucking nervous. <laughs> I got in the bath before I came up. As I started coming up, I was then in the bath. For me, at this point in my life, for reasons I intend to peek into, I get incredibly sleepy during the come up on my psychedelic trips, particularly on LSD and mushrooms, but on other things as well. Um, I could barely stay awake in the bath. I was falling asleep every 30 seconds. I would fall from the bath into random scenes, then I would suddenly pop back awake. Over and over again, I fell into different realities and jumped startled back into my own. Have you ever come out of a dream right as you were falling asleep? It was very much like that. Fake cuts. 
I didn't want to let myself fall asleep. Maybe that was a mistake. But I couldn't remember anything that was happening when I was falling asleep, and I didn't want to waste the trip. I didn't want to either sleep through it or not remember it, whichever explanation made more sense. Which, I wasn't sure which one made more sense. I found incredibly hard for the first hour of the trip to stay awake. It was genuinely the hardest I've ever tried to stay awake. It so deeply reminded me of being in high school, knowing I had to know information that I just didn't know, knowing I had to stay awake to learn it because I was going to be tested on it the next day, and that was just that. I needed to learn the information. I didn't know it, and I was about to be tested on it. It all felt very familiar. So I kept falling in and out of dreams. I can't remember any of them, but they were very psychedelic. I remember reaching into them. I remember them telling me to come in. I remember reaching really hard back to reality. I remember saying no over and over and over again to going to sleep. Again, I'm not sure if that was the right move or not. I remember dreams that made so much sense in deep personal ways I couldn't even try to remember. I literally had no way to remember and yet the knowledge seemed to still be there. It was deep and thrilling and the most fleeting experience of my life. Every bit of information fell through my fingers like sand, faster than any psychedelic has done me before, just completely like sand, because I never even knew what I knew. I just knew that I knew something and then even that was gone. It was layers and layers of knowing and not knowing. And again, I thought very hard to stay awake. I don't know if that was smart or not, and I'm pretty sure I never will. Other things that happened during this, this period. Number one, my skin did that weird blotchy psychedelic thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, your skin starts, it, your, stin, your skin uh, starts or can start looking like uh, almost red, purpley, and like weird, and like you have some sort of like sickness almost, but it's pretty normal. I've had it happen a lot. Um, pretty normal for me, I should say that. Um, another thing that happened was the water obviously felt amazing. I remember that too. The water did feel amazing. Water usually feels amazing on psychedelics. Um, also, during the first hour, I managed to type this into my phone. Um, I'm about an hour into the trip, and I'm fighting sleep so hard but winning. All I know is that I'm a jackass. I feel very capable. I am certainly allowed to grow these, but like, come on, with my cockiness? Crazy in and out dreams, crazy, 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 right on the threshold, right on the threshold. I don't know what this means. That's all I wrote down. <laughs> uh, I still don't know what any of that means, really. Um, all right, so then I kept writing about the trip. The bus started to feel like the wrong place to be, so I got out. As I dried off and got out of the tub, I slowly just morphed out of my weird dream state. I was still a bit tired, but it was as if that part of the trip, the sleepy come up part, was its own entity onto itself. Everything seemed clear again. In fact, very weirdly clear. Colors were slightly brighter, sure, but that was it. Everything was normal. I went and sat down in the doorway between our kitchen and the sunroom. I thought for a bit thought about why nothing was happening, thought about what that meant, thought about chemistry versus alchemy, thought about reality and magic, thought about that one mushroom trip where I took less than a gram and had my socks knocked off of me. I could feel the mushrooms working behind me. It felt almost like they had buried themselves deep in the back of my head and were working diligently out of my sight. I just felt so slightly different. I wanted to do something, so a friend and I went on a walk. I remember a slight psychedelicness to it all. Again, I remember the colors being brighter, but that was about it. I do remember small moments of not seeing objects in front of me, but seeing the whole reality swirl into colors, as if the landscape completely and totally was one entity in and of itself. But that was as psychedelic as it got. It only happened a few times. There were, though, in those moments, zero pieces that could be separated from each other. I kind of remember that, and it was really fun. Um, 
but those moments were small, fleeting, and not at all all-encompassing. They felt like the same revelations I have staring at the sky every day. It didn't feel particularly out of the norm. I was slightly more talkative. I was slightly more alive, slightly more bouncy, slightly more willing to swim, slightly more willing to cry. The trip never got trippy. I'm sure you really enjoy the bait breaks. Anyways, the trip never really got trippy. I didn't see a thing besides the color type experiences I just described. Nothing got swirly, nothing broke from normal reality, no entities popped out of me. I had no overwhelming feelings of connectedness, love, joy, or compassion. I had no overwhelming feelings of death, no confusing life lessons, no pats on the back. It was just another day. Nothing felt particularly special. Everything felt mundane, except for a whisper. There is this whisper behind it all, and I don't know what it meant, but I do know that regardless of nothing happening, I felt changed. How I was changed? No clue. I just went on a walk, saw the sunset, went to Walmart to get some dinner, and went home. I cannot emphasize enough how unintoxicated I felt during this time. But when it was all said and done, when I was laying on the couch, having come down completely, day done and over, I was exhausted. I felt like a marathon had been run. I cried a very silent, slow cry. I didn't know why I was crying, but I just felt bad. I felt bad. I felt changed. I felt weak. I felt like I had had a really hard trip. A good trip, but a hard trip. I felt like I was unpacking a trip filled with psychedelic experiences, but there was nothing to unpack besides the normalcy of it all. Maybe that lesson is very simple. I don't know. Maybe all I'm learning is that mushrooms are a tool, but all they can really show you is everything already in front of your eyes. Every time they teach me exactly what I need to know for that moment. But this is certainly one of the times I've been most confused. Um, and that's where the trip report ends. And I remember that trip pretty well, and that's exactly what it was like. Um, Mushrooms are a tricky little psychedelic. They're not like LSD, they're not like MDMA, they're not these like chemicals that just do these things. Um, they have a mind of their own and they do what they know to do. And for whatever reason, at that point in my life, the changes that needed to happen were subtle and seemingly subconscious. And I certainly wonder what would have happened if I had given into that like dream state. But it doesn't matter because whatever happened, happened. Um, and I certainly changed. Uh, but that's it. You know, that's the whole experience. Um, I'm not going to babble on about it. The point is literally just to show you more experiences that neurodivergent people have with psychedelics. I think there are maybe two videos online of autistic people doing psychedelics, and it's always like a look, an autistic person does LSD, and it's like this sensationalized weird thing, and it's like, yeah, autistic people take drugs, big fucking whoop. Um, but so this was one trip. I've taken about three and a half grams a lot of times. They've all been really different. This was a particularly odd one, but they're actually, they're all particularly odd ones. Um, and Sharing information, I think, is one of the most valuable things that we can do as people with each other besides loving each other and listening to each other. Um, and we're definitely lacking in neurodivergent experiences and information around doing psychedelics. Um, all right, so be safe out there. Don't do things, don't do things alone like I'm really doing here. You should have a trip sitter. Go to some good websites, I'll put them in the description, learn, research, but just have fun. You know, that's the point too. Play with life. Uh, I certainly like playing with life. Um, all right, well, that's it. Um, yeah, I hope it, uh, I hope it helps that there's more, well, that there's just one more experience out there for people to watch if they need to think about it.
Um, anyways, I love you. The rain loves you. The windows love you. My vape loves you. Hold on. Vape loves you a lot. The computer loves you, etc., etc., etc. All the things I normally say, you're God, I'm God, whatever. Um, yeah. Um, and I just, I mean, I hope you're having a great day. And if you do psychedelics regularly and you're neurodivergent, let me know about it. Put it in the comments or something. People need to know more about it. They really, really, really do. It's really important. And, okay, I love you. I'm going to shut up now. Um, goodbye. Uh, you are, no, I said I'm going to shut up. Goodbye.